Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, pay attention, in today's video we have a few good news to share, we'll speak about them, the Italian clubs in Europe, what is the impact for Juve, then we have the first consequences of that qualification for FIFA Club World Cup 2025. I know, I promised you that I would stop speaking about it because the obsession was gone, because we reached our objective. But guys, when I tell you how crucial and important it was, well, we are starting to see the consequences with one player that I'm sure you all love that could possibly extend also because we are participating. A contract extension that was not that obvious. Well, that can change. On the other side, eh... For the people that were hoping, waiting for the coach that would have been changed this season, well, that FIFA World Cup can also have a consequence, can be a new external factor that can decide the future of Max on the bench. So stay with me here because we'll speak about all these topics and much more. Maximo of like, if you didn't yet, please continue to subscribe to the channel. You know it, supporting the channel, you're supporting me. It costs you totally zero, but it's helping me so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we start with the Gazzetta dello Sport that is speaking about the Italian clubs in Europe. Europa League, Conference League yesterday, all the four, they went through to the next stage. Milan, Atalanta, Roma and Fiorentina. So it's actually good for the Italian movement and also a consequence for Juve. Why? Because we know it, the team's two countries with the biggest coefficient, well, they will have an extra spot, a fifth spot in Champions League. At the moment, the ranking is in Italy, Germany, England. The other countries, they can't compete anymore. They have a few countries, but it's too late. It's impossible. So Italy, Germany at the moment, Italy with four teams, Germany with still three teams to compete, England third, but they have five teams. So they will probably overtake Germany. They will maybe even overtake Italy, but Italy should be in that final Two countries, which is great. It's also great because it has a consequence on Juve. First on Serie A. Much more teams are participating in that big super Champions League. More money is going in Serie A in five clubs instead of four. And you know it, I always looking at the other leagues. If Italy has that money instead of Germany, well, you are creating a gap. You go and you have the possibility to do better than them, which is really, really, really great. And also because that fifth spot, you never know. Huh? Juventus, as we speak today, because we spoke a lot about other things this week. Well, if you're looking at Juve, Juve Genoa is important. We are still not out of that negative moment, which we have to do as soon as possible. But at the moment, having a fifth spot, not that I believe that we will finish fifth, but you never know. You never know. So having a fifth, it's always good. Anyway, we go to the next news. Paul Pogba today, happy birthday. Juventus yesterday on social network, they said happy birthday. What can I say about Paul? really sad end of a story really sad especially because it was probably the best midfield that we have and we never had him at disposal not in the first season not in the second season what can i wish to paul i can wish him a bit of happiness i believe that whatever he did whatever happens he also deserves a bit of happiness because so many bad things happened to him a lot of them he was even responsible for them otherwise not i wish him a bit of happiness happy birthday paul it is what it is. If you didn't yet, ragazzi, go on Juventus' YouTube channel and watch the documentary Creator Lab did again a crazy work. Paolo Montero. I consider myself an extremely lucky Juventino because I watched Paolo Montero. That was my era. Montero, Ferrara, Giuliano, Pessota, the certain moment they are all there dinner together, having dinner together. They spoke about Montero, the player, Montero, the coach, Montero, the father, because Montero Jr. is also playing with the under-19. They spoke about Montero, the Juventino, but especially Montero, the men with values that are just incredible. Plant a seed is the title. Go and watch. No, seriously, even if you have to stop here, go and watch it as soon as possible. 22 minutes of pure joy. Now we speak about the first consequences of that FIFA Club World Cup 2025. I told you. Crucial, vital, extremely important, juntoli, big work. And that one is the first step to accelerate. To accelerate, yesterday we spoke about contract extensions. Do you remember? I told you there is something fishy with the contracts of the period that are ending in 2025. They actually end on the 30th of June 2025. The problem, of course, is that tournament will be played between 15th of June and 13th of July, which means... 
the, all the players that are ending their contract in 2025, they can play that first part and then they have to interrupt and stopping. They are not players of Juve. And that's why yesterday we already spoke about the list of players that are in negotiation to extend their contract, or at least that we have to find a solution for. You remember the list yesterday, the three goalkeepers, I spoke to you about Danilo, De Ciglio, Weston McKenney, Chiesa, Ealing Jr., Moise Keane, nine players. You remember I told you, well, Moise Keane is one player, Ealing Jr. is another player, but the player that we were all interested in is Federico Chiesa. Because at the moment, it was not that obvious that he would extend. The verbal agreement was there, yeah, he will not leave for free, but what does that mean? He will not leave for free. He can possibly already leave now. You uh, earn cash, not as much as you expect, but Chiesa earn now and leaves now immediately. Verbal means nothing. On the other side, now we have the opportunity to extend him more easily. That FIFA Club World Cup, all the players in the world, they want to play it. They want to play it. And at the moment, with the contract on the 30th of June 2025, he can only play the first part. Then he has to leave. He wants to play it. And where can he go to play it? In Italy. Juve or Inter? Two clubs. Don't believe he will go to Inter. Two can go to England. Manchester City or Chelsea. Or maybe, I don't know, Arsenal if they win the cup, which will be tough, but you never know. Two clubs. In Germany, Dortmund, Bayern Munich. In Spain, Real Madrid and or Barcelona or Atletico. So it's tough. It's extremely tough for players that coming from a year that has not been perfect for Chiesa to find another team to play that tournament. So of course, that interest in playing in such a big tournament will be there for Chiesa and will be that extra boost to say, you know what? I extend. Even if it's for only one year, but I extend. I participate to that cup. I have an entire season to play again. Champions League, so Champions League, FIFA World Cup, we go, maybe there will be a change of coach, and if not immediately, the year after, and I'm safe, and I stay at Juve, I don't take any risk. So today, the shares of the quotes of Chiesa staying at Juve are bigger than yesterday, and that's extremely important. Of course, I told you in the intro, there is the other side of the coin because yesterday when I told you all the players that were at end of contract in 2025 I totally forgot I didn't even think about it but also the coach is in exactly the same situation his contract is also ending on the 30th of June 2025 and that's now an extra factor because no way if it could have happened that Max Allegri would have continued until um, the end of 2025 June could have been Strange, especially in Italy, because end of year trainers with one year of contract, usually it doesn't happen a lot. It, it nearly never happens. Well, now it's really strange because what can they do to Max Allegri? We give you an addendum for two more weeks or that will accelerate the and, and empower actually the decision to stop immediately with Max Allegri or they will even extend Max Allegri maybe like yes, one more year to be sure that there is not that disrespectful two more weeks on your addendum. You see? So pay attention. This one, that FIFA World Cup, a lot of benefits, but also a lot of things that nobody thought about in the beginning, or at least we didn't, maybe the club did. So let's see. Important decision for Max Allegri where FIFA World Cup can be also there decisive. Yesterday I spoke to you about three players, the goalkeepers, because they are all in the same situation. Chesney, Perin, Pinzoglio. All of them in the same situation as Chiesa, as McKenny, as uh, Danilo, as uh, Max Allegri. Their contract will end on the 30th of June. Juventus, and we hear it eh, from time to time, an interest for Donnarumma, Di Gregorio, Carne Secchi. So a lot of time Juventus is linked with a goalkeeper. The thing is, we never know who he will replace or a Perin, or a Chesney. Perin, that I already told you, fantastic goalkeeper this season. Unfortunately, he didn't play that much. I believe four games in total, two of Coppa Italia and two in the beginning of the season. And that's it for Perin. It's a goalkeeper that is still young and already has proven his qualities. It's a player that probably will not make that step to be the official number one for an entire season at Juve. Indeed, it's a pity. So probably he's also thinking, you know, if you are looking for other names, 
maybe I will never be number one. And maybe with some years to play, I can leave Juventus. Could be now or in one year, we don't know. But that's a possibility that we have to take into account. And that's why we hear sometimes other names. On the other side, also Chesney that has one more year of contract until 2025. The problem with Chesney is not the qualities because the qualities are undiscussable. The problem is the salary between six, seven million euros is earning a lot for the actual parameters of Juve that is looking to decrease also that salary mass. Well, a Chesney that would love to continue with Juve, to end his career even with Juve, if it's not that Juve it would be in London, but that Juve is feeling really well. I saw a picture that apparently his wife is also pregnant, so sometimes these external familial factors are helping a lot. We are settled, we are good, we want to continue. If he continue, he will have to spread his salary, extending a contract maybe 26, 27, but with lower money. But maybe Juventus is also thinking, you know, we continue with you, you still become the number one next season, and then you take that Buffon role, becoming that number two with that young goalkeeper that can maybe arrive immediately, so that he learns from you, he sees you without too much pressure, while the second year he becomes the number one. Could be that Carneseki is that goalkeeper. 23 years, Tuto Sport is writing it. Juve, Progetto Carneseki. There is really a project for Carneseki. A goalkeeper, pay attention, that with this season, his price is also increasing. Atalanta took him for 20 million euro. So it's a lot of money. They invested also there. 30, 40 million euro. Eh, will be tough. But Juventus is really considering another goalkeeper for the near future. I don't believe in Donnarumma, but Carnesecchi can be one. Like the goalkeeper also from Porto, uh, Diogo Costa, 24 years, even if there he just extended, there is a close of 60, 65 million euro. Forget about it. Now, we spoke about the goalkeepers, we spoke about Chiesa, we spoke about uh, Max Allegri. There are a few names that are turning around Juve, especially in that midfield that we need to do better at. We know it. And a lot of names are there. I believe yesterday I counted so many players, I don't remember. But there are four that are really persistent, that we are speaking about every single day. Cope Manners, Ferguson, Samarsic, but even Fabian Ruiz. I don't speak that much about him because it's my least preferable option, but it's really a name that is there and that we are continuing to speak about. What are the differences about these four players that are, I can guarantee you, in that list of John Tolly? Well, Cope Manners, the price, around 50 million euro, maybe 45, maybe 55, but Atalanta is really requesting a lot for Cope Manners. Ferguson, beautiful season, fantastic season, is already at 30 million euro. Samarsic, it depends also what Udinese will do with that important win against uh, Lazio, I believe. They are out of their relegation zone, but if they go in second division, the price will be even cheaper. But even there, Udinese, they know that it's a player that is on the market. The problem with, of course, Samaritic is the age and father. That is quite difficult. He already made Inter deal collapse, Napoli deal collapse. So it's a tough one to deal with for Samaritic. And then you have Fabian Ruiz, where we don't know. It depends a bit of the... The mood of Paris Saint-Germain owners, if they really want to or not, it depends. So we don't really know the price of Fabian Ruiz. Not that they need money, but sometimes they are really picky on these kind of things. Then in terms of playing style, because it's four different players, if Ferguson and Coop Manners can be used in more or less the same roles, they have the ability to go up, to also go down. Coop Manners even played in the Netherlands, played as a center defender. Coop Manners has a bit more experience as a Ferguson, is a player that... Uh, can score, and you already showed it, but Ferguson is really the upcoming Cope Manor. So instead of going for the Cope Manners immediately, the player, well, Juventus could anticipate and taking the player that could potentially become the new Cope Manners, which is a different way of thinking, but you're saving cost. Less experience, yes, it's true, but it's a player that is doing fantastic, especially if you are going with a Thiago Silva that really knows him. Atalanta players, pay attention if you're looking at the curriculum of a lot of Atalanta players, while or when they leave the team of Bergamo, a lot of them have difficulties to find the same productivity that they had with Gasperini. So pay attention there. Then Samarsic, well, it's the youngest one of all of them, the most offensive one, probably the one that is making the most supporters dream because he's the offensive midfielder that a lot of time we are asking for that creative uh, player what are the weaknesses character behavior 
consistency is another problem that he has. Uh, and then Fabian Ruiz, that is probably the most technical one, uh, but it's also the less physical one. The player that, yes, played well at Napoli, not that great at Paris Saint-Germain. According to me, or well, according to me, no, in my opinion, it's my least favorite choice, but that's the four midfielders that are really persistent. I really believe that we will not go only for one, but I will. I think that Juventus will go for two, depending also what you deal with Adrien Rabiot. That with that FIFA World Cup, also him probably is doing the same math. Instead of going to another, maybe that can be a decisive one, could be. What will happen with Fagioli? How will Fagioli come back? Where will the new coach or the same coach see Fagioli playing in which position? As a regista, as a mezzala? What about Locatelli? That of course will be there next season, but now we have to understand what position. Will he continue as a regista? then he will need to wake up to do better than what he showed already today. Will he play in a different way? Will Juventus play with a three or two men midfield, which Locatelli can play at or not? So a lot of question there. We are not sure yet. One thing that is sure more and more and more, that is that the, the wings will be overhauled. There will be a total change. With Weah, that is not sure about this position because it didn't impress. But also with Kostic. Kostic is probably the player that regressed the most from the first season at Juve to the second one. And also without assist, where McKen is doing fantastically well with the assist, even if it's not a winger. Well, without the assist, nearly also in risk or at risk of losing the Serbian national team. So it's not only Juventus that is doubting about Filip Kostic, but it's also, uh, you know, out of Europe. So Kostic can be at risk, uh, Ealing Jr. to cash in. So there will be a lot of changes for Juventus in this Mercato. Can we please everyone? I don't think so. Will we have a pharaonic, just to link it with pharaonic, a pharaonic Mercato? I don't think so, but a lot of things can change. Um, the last thing that I wanted to speak about is, uh, yeah, uh, Alcaraz. Alcaraz that... Uh, will be out one month. We can see him uh, in April. I believe the, the train, unfortunately, went over. He had a big, huge opportunity. Unfortunately, that injury is taking him out to prove himself, but I believe also taking away the chance that we can even sit on the table to renegotiate. Except if they give him one more year on loan, I don't see possibilities, and that's a pity for our midfield. Then we see Corriere de los Pores a bit Pro Allegri, no pro Juve, I think that's a big difference, no pro Juve, but a bit pro Allegri, or putting Allegri with a big smile on that first page, Max is feeling super, why, because with the fifth spot, etc, etc, well, the quotes for the joining Champions League that Max Allegri said 70 points can even go lower at 64, which we need two more wins, so that's why Genoa is even important, but anyway, I believe that uh, Juventus needs to do much more than only two wins in 10 games, otherwise we have a real problem, not that we qualify or not to Champions League, but it would be a total design, I, I will not survive, and after Genoa, by the way, there is Lazio, Lazio that Sarri said goodbye, who will be there, probably not this weekend, because it's uh, the vice coach of um, Sarri that will take over for one week, but then it will be Igor Tudor, that last season we were speaking a lot about the possibilities of seeing Igor Tudor on the, Tudor on the bench of Juve. Well, now uh, Tudor will become the coach of Lazio. Tough one, eh? And you know it, I don't like this kind of last-minute change of coaches. I remember I still am haunted about the Monza change of coach. Uh, also this season with Napoli changing of coach. Uh, you know, total disaster. And especially Tudor. I like Tudor. So I hope he's doing well in uh, Serie A after the Juve game. I hope he's not doing well in Coppa Italia because otherwise we have a problem. And that's why I'm speaking about Tudor. That's why I'm speaking about Lazio. It's not only that game of Serie A, but it's also Coppa Italia that now they will have another way of playing. The only thing that is positive, maybe, it's Tudor Guendouzi. Guendouzi is probably the best player at Lazio this season. Well, they had some problems at Marseille. They were not always finding a good relationship. Well, Guendouzi will see Tudor again. That can be the only uh, the only good thing for Juventini that Guendouzi will be taken. I don't know. Let's see. Anyway, maximum of like if you didn't say, please continue to subscribe. Grazie, forza. Juventus.